my dorky daddies. How are y'all doing? A couple months ago, roughly about a month and a half ago, I made a video called Final Cut is Objectively Faster than DaVinci Resolve, objectively. And if I'm being completely honest, this is a video that I've wanted to make for a very long time, and I kind of felt like it was a harmless video. I wasn't trying to be super controversial, I was just trying to explain what I believe to be objectively true, having used Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve for years now, both of them, and explain why for cutting up and doing basically a basic cut, a A-roll, cutting down a clip in Final Cut Pro, that is objectively faster than what you can do in DaVinci Resolve from just a clicks, eye movement, movement perspective. Moving around the timeline, making cuts and cutting down footage, it is faster in Final Cut Pro. And I did this with like a little Rubik's Cube analogy. Again, super nerdy video. I was just trying to like explain a concept I've been wanting to explain for forever and finally felt like I had the words and the story to do so. Now, some of y'all freaked out in the Holy War sphere. You got in your old DaVinci Resolve Final Cut, you know, keyboard warrior, pounded this bad boy and told me all of the ways that I was wrong. And I read every single one of these comments. I do. I really do. I'm not big enough yet to where I can't read all the comments. And in some ways, you guys were, I'll say right, or kind of made a point, but generally speaking, you're still dead wrong. <laughs> so in today's video, I wanna rehash this concept. I wanna to try to explain it again. And I want to, to the best of my ability, show a couple of these opinions that the comments had, give them some validity, but also show some of the comments on the Final Cut side and explain why, well, again, you guys are just wrong. Final Cut is faster at cutting down footage. And we're gonna talk about that today. <laughs> to the screen capture. So we're gonna start out in Final Cut Pro again, just to try to rehash, reiterate what we showed last time and why it is so damn good to cut up a roll or really just any clips in Final Cut Pro. So here's a Talking Heads clip from a uh, previous video that I did, it may have even been this one, I can't remember what I was talking about here. Got a brand new version of oh, Magnetic Mask, this was a great video. Loved that feature, still love it. <laughs> so again, I wanna try to really make sure that I make these points crystal clear and really highlight what is going on in the Final Cut Pro timeline. In Final Cut Pro, there is a feature, I'm going to move my mouse here, there is a feature called the skimming playhead, I call it the secondary playhead, and it's that red line following my mouse right now. This is the greatest feature in Final Cut Pro, bar none. DaVinci Resolve could totally add this. I don't know why they haven't. DaVinci, I'm telling you, you'd win us over in Final Cut Pro land if you could add this because it's toggleable in Final Cut Pro. You don't even have to use this if you don't want to. If you're editing in Final Cut Pro and you're not using this, use this. To turn it on, it is this little, um, what is it, this one? skimming on or off it's this skimming icon so if you turn it off it goes away but you want to have it on it's amazing and all this is really doing is just allowing your mouse to constantly be a playhead so again this red line has all of the behaviors of the main playhead in final cut pro but it follows your mouse and again it can be anywhere in the play in the timeline sorry excuse me in the timeline I can move my mouse up here and it follows. I can move my mouse on the clips themselves and it follows. I can move them down in the audio area and it follows. The other cool thing about Final Cut Pro that I really like is that anywhere that I click in the timeline, the playhead, the main playhead, the gray one, follows as well. Okay, so why do I love this? Let's just pretend that my playhead, my main one, the gray one with the little cursor up top, the little triangle thing, is off to the left. I don't care. In Final Cut Pro, that cursor is just kind of a nice thing to sort of keep some frame of reference, but it's all about the secondary skimming playhead, and here's why. I've got my waveforms nice and big on this clip so I can see exactly where I'm going to finish talking here, so I can follow my mouse on those waveforms. I'm looking at those waveforms. My eyes are on those waveforms, and then I can use this red playhead. I don't have to click or do anything. I can just hover. I have not clicked, and I can hit my hotkey to razor the clip. Now, 
even more beautifully. Again, I'm, I'm looking at you guys because I'm trying to explain this, but when I'm editing, my eyes are still right there on that mouse, and I scroll over. I'm still looking. I'm looking at the waveforms. I'm trying to find exactly where I want my cut to be, and I just moved that mouse. I didn't have to take my eyes off of anything there, and I hit my trim start shortcut, which again just cuts off the front of that next clip. I make the cut, I move the mouse, and I cut out that space. Again, this is just truly the magic of the secondary playhead. You make a cut, you trim, cut, you trim, and I can just look at those waveforms and I can just get them exactly where I want, and it is so stupidly fast. I don't have to click, I can just hover the mouse and I'm just chopping, chopping, chopping. It's amazing. There was one comment that actually reminded me of a faster way to do this sort of move in Final Cut Pro. It's kind of relatively faster. We'll address that at the end, but let's review, let's open up DaVinci Resolve and review why you guys were wrong that you can't do it as quickly as what we just showed. So. Let's open up DaVinci. I've got the project queued up. Uh, let's drag this clip down and let's essentially do the exact same thing that we wanted to do in Final Cut Pro in DaVinci Resolve. So, so looking here, again, I have no secondary playhead. Let's just remind you of that. And I can't click anywhere in the timeline to move the playhead. I have to click up in the ruler to do so. So. You're kind of already hopefully seeing what I'm talking about. The grievance that a lot of people had is that if I'm down here looking at these waveforms, again, exactly as I was doing in Final Cut Pro, my beef with DaVinci Resolve is that I'm looking at those waveforms. My eyes are focused on this waveform. I'm an editor. I'm like tractor beam Star Wars just honed the F in on those waveforms because that's how you edit. And in order to place the playhead there to make a cut, I either need to switch over to the blade tool, which works, but then when I go over here, I have to either make a cut to cut out the dead space, switch back to my select tool, click the clip, I have to use my mouse, and then hit my delete hotkey to remove lots more stuff going on there. Now the other alternative is that I can click up here and drag my ruler to there, do that, move my ruler, and do my trim hockey. Now this is where the comment section had some grievances and I kind of agree with you guys, but I also just think that like, the devil is in the details. So, theoretically, if I'm looking at these waveforms, I do have to take my eyes off of them to go up to the ruler, drag the playhead, make a cut. Now, instead of letting go of my mouse, I can keep, you can see it over here, I can keep my mouse held, I can drag over here and skim like I was doing in Final Cut Pro. This is the faster version that you guys mentioned in the comments, and while I do agree, yes, that is better than looking up, clicking, looking down, clicking, you know, doing all of that. It saves you kind of one back and forth. I still dislike it. And the reason I dislike it is because again, in Final Cut Pro, I can have my mouse here and I don't need to have a blade tool opened up. I just automatically have that secondary playhead following my mouse going like this. So I think I'm making my point pretty clear here, right? If I'm looking at my waveform as an editor, again, tractor beam zoned in on the waveform, the fact that I even have to look up at all to click and drag my playhead is a total pain in the butt. Let's go back. I love that in Final Cut, I can just be looking at those waveforms, I can make a cut, and I can trim the start. It is an effortless move, and even though it is really ticky-tack small in DaVinci Resolve, it adds up. It totally adds up. As an editor who's looking at waveforms and has to go up here, I'm constantly breaking my concentration, and it just takes me out of cutting up the edit. It's just more buttons that I don't need to press. It's more, you know, more strain on these dang daddy carpal tunnel wrists that I don't need, and I just... Final Cut Pro 
is better. <sighs> Uh, okay. okay, so did I make my point? Did I hit all of the comments? We addressed the common in Resolve, where you could click and drag the playhead. That was the main grievance that everyone had. And while I think that, yeah, technically you guys are right, it still is not... It's not as fast as it can be in Final Cut Pro. Now, the funny thing about this is that one of my Final Cut boys actually pointed out to me that you can kind of do this even faster in Final Cut Pro. So in Final Cut Pro, if you hit R... There's this little tool called the range selection tool. And the range selection tool actually exists in Fairlight in DaVinci Resolve. But if you watch my screen here and I click on a clip, I can select essentially a section of a clip. So in this case, this is going to be a gap that I want to delete. And I hit my delete key and I delete the gap. And I just click and drag, delete. Click and drag, delete. And again, because of the secondary playhead, I don't even care about my playhead. I'm just clicking on the clip itself. It's pretty damn effortless. Like, this is pretty magical. This is cool. It's about the same amount of effort as the previous technique that I was just showing you guys, but it is just a reminder. There are so many ways to chop up this clip in Final Cut Pro that are just so damn good. I feel kind of like a failed nerd. I didn't crack out the Rubik's Cube once for this video, but I hope you guys get what I'm trying to say here. If this is still confusing for some reason, let me know in the comments. Again, this is the kind of stuff that I just nerd out about. I love the design language of these two applications. And again, I meant to say this at the beginning. I kind of hinted at it. I use both of them. I love both of them. I genuinely use and love both of these applications. But in this particular instance, you know, I'm just trying to be as objective and honest as I possibly can be and just show you guys ways that Final Cut Pro is faster. And again, I've used both of these for years. I do know what I'm talking about. I'm not the expert on everything, but in this particular instance, I feel very passionate and very strongly that I'm presenting the data in such a way that it's factually correct. So anyway, that is all I've got for today, guys. Again, I just, I'm a big fat freaking dork. You guys know that. I just love talking about these two pieces of editing software. That is what just gets me pumped. Just gets me pumped. Ugh. Love this shit. If you like what we do here on the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you've watched a couple of videos and you really like what we do, uh, consider becoming a member to support the channel. We love our Dorky Daddy members. They are the best. They're the biggest dorks in town who just love editing, maybe even more than I do. So anyway, you guys have a great rest of your day or evening or whatever else you got going on. And I will see you in the next video because I got to get back to editing. Later, guys. Stay dorky.